I hope you guys are all having a wonderful day. Easy Auto Fix here, and today we're gonna learn how to test an oxygen sensor. There are two types of oxygen sensors, narrowband and wideband. The narrowband will be four wires or less, while the wideband most of the time will be more than four wires. Today I'll be talking about the narrowband, specifically the zirconia type. The purpose of the oxygen sensor is to measure the amount of oxygen in the exhaust system and communicate it with the ECM. It does this by producing its own voltage by measuring the difference between oxygen in the exhaust system versus the oxygen in the atmosphere. It only produces a voltage when the sensor is heated up to 600 Fahrenheit. But for faster and more efficient results it needs to be at 1500 Fahrenheit. Most cars have two oxygen sensors, one before the catalytic converter and one after. Some have three or even four depending on your engine size or if you have two catalytic converters. The oxygen sensor before the catalytic converter is used by the ECM to add or reduce fuel by controlling the fuel injectors to achieve the perfect air fuel ratio. For example, if the oxygen sensor measures a rich condition, which means more fuel and less air, the ECM will reduce fuel. If the sensor measures a lean condition, which means more air and less fuel, the ECM will command more fuel. On the other hand, the oxygen sensor after the cat is used to calculate the efficiency of the catalytic converter. Now there are four types of zirconia oxygen sensors. We will start things off with the first test that can be applied to all four types and is only for the oxygen sensor before the catalytic converter. You'll need a digital multimeter, I'll leave it in the description below. The first step is to ensure that your vehicle's engine is turned off before starting. To test an oxygen sensor, position your multimeter to 2 volts on the DC voltage section. Using a back probe test lead, connect the red lead of the multimeter to the signal wire of the oxygen sensor. Then touch the black lead to a solid ground. This can be the negative side of the battery or simply by touching the metal frame of the car. Now start your engine and wait until the oxygen sensor heats up to at least 600 Fahrenheit to be able to produce a voltage reading and allow the car to go into closed loop. Once it is, you want your voltage reading to fluctuate below 300 to over 800 millivolts or below 0.3 to over 0.8 volts. If this is the case, your oxygen sensor should be good and doesn't need to be replaced. If your oxygen sensor is malfunctioning and needs to be replaced, it won't fluctuate at all or it will stay close to 450 millivolts or 0.45 volts at all times. Now if the O2 sensor reads higher than 550 millivolts at all times, this indicates a rich air fuel mixture and could be caused by one of the following. The high reading could also be caused by the sensor giving a bad reading due to contamination. If you have a reading that's below 350 millivolts at all times, this indicates a lean air fuel mixture and could be caused by a defective oxygen sensor or by one of the following. An easy way to check if it's the O2 sensor is the floor on the gas pedal. You should see the O2 sensor react instantly and increase voltage. If not, then most likely the O2 sensor is faulty. The second test only applies to the oxygen sensors with the heater and can be used for both sensors before and after the cat. First, make sure your vehicle's off. You want to set your multimeter to 200 in the ohms position to measure resistance. Next, disconnect the oxygen sensor and connect one test lead to the heater terminal while connecting the other lead to the second heater terminal. On most cars, the heater wires will be the same color, but make sure you look into your vehicle's repair manual. If you don't have one, I'll leave a link where you can get one in the description below. If you get no reading at all, then you have a bad heater and the sensor needs to be replaced. If you do have a reading, then that's a good sign, just make sure it's within spec according to your vehicle's repair manual. I've seen specifications being from 2 to 4, 5 to 7, and even up to 16 ohms. Now other than the oxygen sensor being bad, make sure you check your wires aren't damaged and the connectors are free of corrosion as these can make your oxygen sensors malfunction. Good deal. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so I can see you in the next one.